This video will explain pronouns and antecedents. It's important for you to be able to identify pronouns and antecedents to edit your sentences later to make sure that they are grammatically correct. So we'll start by defining pronouns. A pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. So let's look at this example. Sarah went to the store. She bought bread and milk. We could have said Sarah went to the store. Sarah brought, bought bread and milk, but that's awfully repetitive. So the word she is the pronoun that replaces the word Sarah. It lets us not have to repeat the same noun over and over again. The antecedent then is the noun that the pronoun refers to. In our previous example, we said that she, from she bought bread and milk, was the pronoun. Well, she refers to Sarah, so that means that Sarah is our antecedent. There are many different pronouns, and this chart shows the different types of pronouns we have. This chart does not list all the pronouns that there are, but it does help you understand how we divide and classify pronouns and how they are used. I highly recommend that you pause the video and copy this chart in your notes. This will help you a lot later when we get to pronoun antecedent agreement errors, a type of grammatical error that you're going to learn to correct. I do want to explain this chart to you a little bit though. When we speak or write, we have three different persons from which we can speak. We have first person, which means that you're talking about yourself. We have second person, which means that you're talking directly to someone else. And then we have third person, which means you're talking about someone else. For each of these types of person, the perspective from which we're speaking, when we think of pronouns, we also have three types of pronouns. We have subject pronouns. These are pronouns that function as the subject of the sentence. We have possessive pronouns, which show ownership. And then we have object pronouns. Object pronouns are pronouns that come after verbs and they function as the object of a verb. They cannot function as a subject in a sentence. The rest of this chart shows the difference between singular and plural pronouns based on whether they are subject, possessive, or object pronouns and based on the perspective from which we're speaking, first, second, or third. So for example, when I'm talking about first person and I'm talking about myself, the singular subject person pronoun, the, the pronoun that could start a sentence as a subject would be I if I'm speaking singularly or we if I'm speaking plurally. When I have possessive pronouns and I'm talking about second person where I'm talking to you directly, I would have for possessive, your or yours. And if I'm talking in third person, I'm speaking about someone else, and I'm looking at object pronouns, I would have the singular pronouns him, her, or it, and then the plural pronoun, them. And that is how this chart works. We are going to refer to this chart to answer some examples. So if you haven't done so, you should really pause the video and copy this chart in your notes. In these exam examples, we are going to find the pronoun and the antecedent. It's important to make sure that we know what these types of words are and that we can identify them in a sentence before we try to correct any errors with them. So let's look at the first example. Where are my keys? Oh, there they are. I have a couple different pronouns in this sentence. First, I have the pronoun my, and I also have the pronoun they. The pronoun my, if I look back at my chart, is a singular possessive first person pronoun. So what is the antecedent of my? What is it referring to? It's not explicitly stated in the sentence, but it's simply referring to myself. Then we have the pronoun they. If we look at the chart, they is a third person plural subject pronoun. What does they refer to? What is the antecedent to the pronoun they? Keys. So in this sentence, we had two pronouns, my and they, and the antecedent for the pronoun they is keys. Let's look at the next example. Bethany is doing really well in school. She got an A on her test. Can you find the pronoun in this sentence? The pronoun here is the word she. If we look at our chart, we can see that she is a singular third-person subject pronoun. 
If I'm having a hard time figuring out the antecedent, knowing what type of pronoun she is can help me. I know I'm talking about another person. I know I'm talking about something singular. And I know I'm talking about something that can function as a subject in a sentence. Because this is also she, I know it's a female. So all of that together would lead me to the word Bethany. Because Bethany is singular, is a female, and is a subject of a sentence. So in this sentence, the pronoun is she and the antecedent is Bethany. Let's do one more example. Paul and Joseph worked a lot over the summer. In fact, all of their hard work meant they earned enough money to go on vacation. I have two pronouns in this sentence. Can you find them? I have the pronouns there, and I also have the pronoun they. If I refer back to my chart to see what kind of pronoun they are, those two pronouns are, I can see that they is a plural third person subject pronoun, and their is a plural third person possessive pronoun. So these are both speaking about more than one other person. Well, who are both of these referring to? They have the same antecedent, and they're both referring to Paul and Joseph. Now that we've practiced finding pronouns and antecedents, let's do some examples of filling in the blank with appropriate pronouns. This means we have to find the antecedent first and then look at our chart to figure out what pronoun makes the most amount of sense in the sentence. So here we have the dog chased blank tail. Well, if I'm looking at my blank here, it's blank tail. So that means that I'm going to have something in here about the dog's tail. So my antecedent is the word dog. I need to fill this in with a pronoun that makes sense. Well, I know it can't be a subject pronoun because I already have a subject. So that means I have to, and I'm talking about a dog, which is a singular other thing. So I'm talking about third person singular, and it can't be a subject. So that leaves me with all of these. This is an example of a sentence that has a possessive pronoun. And so we would need to choose the singular third person possessive pronoun that best fits the word dog. And that pronoun is the word its. So we would say the dog chased its tail. Let's do one more example. And in this example, we have quite a few blanks. I can't believe blank mom bought me a car. Blank is the best mom ever, and the car is awesome. I love blank. Let's do tackle these one at a time. So let's look at the first sentence. I can't believe blank mom bought me a new car. So here we have a blank, and we already have a subject in the sentence. The subject is I. And we know that we're talking about ourselves because of the subject being I. So I'm looking for a first person pronoun that cannot be a subject, and I also know that I is singular. So I'm looking for a first person singular pronoun that is not a subject. So that leaves me with the choice of my or mine and me. Now, if you're really stuck, you could fit all those into the sentence and see which, sound, which one sounds correct. But this is an example of a, of an, a possessive. Mom bought me a car. And so the possessive pronoun that makes the most amount of sense in here would be, I can't believe mom bought, I cannot believe my mom bought me a new car. So our pronoun is my and our antecedent is I. Then we have the next sentence, blank is the best mom ever. Well here, I just have a blank before my verb is. So now I know I need a subject pronoun because this sentence doesn't have a subject without this blank. So I need to figure out who I'm referring to. Who is the best mom ever? Well, mom is the best mom ever. So my antecedent is mom. So I need to, and we know mom is singular. We're talking about someone else and mom is a female. So I need to go back to my chart and find a singular third person subject pronoun that best makes sense when talking about another person. Can you find which one it should be? It should be she. We would say she is the best mom ever. 
Let's look at the last two sentences in this example. And the car is awesome. I love blank. To better help us better focus on just these, I'm going to separate them. So in our sentence that needs a pronoun, we have I love blank. So we know our pronoun's going to go here in the blank, but we already have the subject I. So now I know I'm not going to use a subject pronoun. What I need to figure out is what do I love to determine the antecedent. Do I love myself? Am I referring to the, the, the pronoun I as the antecedent? Probably not, because that wouldn't make sense in the context of the other sentence. So let's look at the previous sentence to see if we can find an antecedent. What do I love? I love the car. So if I know that my antecedent is the word car, I now know I'm talking about something else, so this is third person, and it's singular, and we already said it's not a subject. So if we look back at our chart, we need to find something that is third person singular and not a subject. Remember how I said an object comes after a noun, comes after a verb? This is an example of a pronoun that functions as an object because it's coming after that verb. So what would be a third person singular object pronoun that best fits, fits car? Well, it would be it. So we would say, and the car is awesome, I love it. If you're having any trouble identifying pronouns and antecedents, please look at the chapter in your book that explains pronouns and antecedents, and then reach out to your instructor.